every year when we had the school vacation, we'll go to the little towns and I spend there two months. And it was very simple, very simple life. That's my mother describing her early life in Colombia, a country she remembers as peaceful and eminently civilized. My aunt Beatrice, who still lives in Colombia, has similar memories. Everybody was friendly because it seemed like everybody knew each other. They're talking about a time before Colombia became synonymous with this. The bomb was hidden in a bus that was driving past what was considered one of the safest places in Bogota. Drugs and violence. During the 80s and 90s was the worst period. When the drug dealers came, they put bombs in the hotels, bombs in the clubs. The country seemed to be in chaos. In the span of one week in 1985, the Palace of Justice was attacked by guerrillas and almost half the Supreme Court murdered. Just days later, 25,000 people were buried by a volcano in the countryside. I vividly remember the Time magazine headline that week. It felt like my mother's country was dying. This was a war zone. There was a guerrilla trench here, then over there were the paramilitaries. In the city of Medellin, I met Daniel Felipe Caseno. Jeez, it's bonita. A graffiti artist and former gang member. Growing up in this neighborhood, he says, wasn't easy. There were constant confrontations, constant. There were eruptions here and eruptions there. This was the border zone between them. He's talking about what things were like 10 years ago. But today, Colombia is a much different place. Crime has plummeted, with kidnappings down 90 percent. In Medellin, once called the murder capital of the world, the homicide rate fell 80 percent over a 20-year period. In 2012, readers of the Wall Street Journal magazine named Medellin City of the Year. I grew up thinking that the guy who had money, who had women, was the one with the better life. We had a culture of illegality. People will say, well, I can follow this path and I will get there. I don't have to follow the norms. I don't have to respect the law. Governor Sergio Fajardo was mayor of Medellin from 2003 to 2007. Nowhere is the change in Colombia more dramatic than here. A critical moment in the city's turnaround, the death of its infamous drug trafficker, Pablo Escobar. He was one of the most wanted men in the world. Pablo Escobar was the kingpin of the Medellin cartel. Today, they shot him down on the rooftop of a house in Medellin where his drug empire was based. When the Colombian state managed to get him down, that marked the end of a very rough period in our history. Today, a relatively peaceful, prosperous Medellin has become known for an ambitious urban renewal project. In the hillside slums, the city's worst neighborhoods, they've put the most beautiful buildings. If we had run a poll here asking people if they wanted to have something like this, they would have said no, because they couldn't imagine what this meant. This library sits in a former no man's land. For this community, said, we have one of the most beautiful things. You are not treated as they are poor, give them some little thing, but you had the best. You went all out. <laughs> That's right. Medellin's botanical gardens were once so dangerous they had to be shut down. Today in the gardens, this spectacular wood canopy. Next to a river used to dump corpses during the drug wars, sits a brand new cultural arts center. ¿Qué haces en este centro? We paint, draw, sing, we color, watch movies, learn, we do activities. And to help integrate people once isolated on the hillside, solar-powered cable cars spanning almost 10 miles. It takes 10 minutes from the Jeez. bottom to the top 
and it would take them an hour. There's also this unusual system of outdoor escalators. And this right here, this is free, it's gratis. Si, sí, es gratis. Moving through one of Medellin's worst neighborhoods, it has six sections and reaches a height of 1,200 feet. That's 28 stories tall. It turns what was a 30-minute uphill hike into a six-minute ride. There hasn't been a single violent act in any of the public spaces that we built in Medellin because people know this is ours. We are resilient and you would come here and see people moving forward with plenty of energy. Even at the worst time? Even at the worst time. Of course, Colombia still has problems. Rebel groups based in remote jungles continue to pose a challenge. But the country is clearly on the upswing. This year, Colombia hopes to have four million tourists visit. We have some particular genes in our culture that make us strong. We never bowed. We have suffered, but we have never surrendered. When I tell other Americans that Colombia might be a place they'd want to visit, most of them say, but isn't it still pretty dangerous? What would you say to them? I say you, the only danger is to want to stay forever. That is the danger. 